Perhaps so. The shard you have found, show it to me. Yes, Sieri? Sieri? Is that what you sought? No. It is much more. Forget the betrayer. Forget our vengeance. These shards, they must all be found. Whatever forces you need, we shall grant you, but these shards must be ours. Of course, Zieri, it shall be done. Dalrin. Lord Dalrin now, I hear. Who's there? Come now. You remember? Has it really been so long? You... But, but you died at the battle at West Harbor. Delayed, perhaps. My imprisonment was most distressing. But dead? Now how could I die with so much left unfinished? And there is so much more left to do. So this is Neverwinter? Suppose it's possible, for a city built by humans can't say I care for it though. You want a proper city, you build down, not up. This place feels unnatural. The wood and stone, it's as if they've been silenced. I wish you'd both be silent. The entire trip was just one long whine from the two of you. Oh, me stomach feels funny. This boat rocks like a baby's cradle. This water is so unnatural and deep, not like the swamp of dead people I grew up in. Not that I've got great memories of this place, but it's home. So, where are we going first? Good idea. I've got a few things I need to unload as well. Let's not be too obvious though, alright? The docks can get kind of rough at times. Me? I'm not nervous. Just being careful, that's all. Believe me. I know Neverwinter pretty well. Let's get going. I've got gold burning a hole in my pouch and I'm looking to spend it.
follow me. Stay close and step where I step. Coming back to the city was a mistake, Nishka. You didn't think you'd slip in unnoticed, did you? No. I'm just surprised it took you this long to notice. So who's wasting their money on you this time, Benin? That's right, Benin. You... You think I'd come back without some muscle on my side? Well, you thought wrong, and I'm still waiting for an answer. You're too stupid to come here on your own. So who sent you? Leldon's still got a bounty out on you, goat girl. He's even up the price for those horns. So what'll it be, Benin? Run now, or let me remove that empty head from your neck? Brave talk, girl, but your luck's run out. I'm gonna send you back to the Nine Hells, where your kind belongs. Hey, home is where the heart is. And I'm staying right here in Neverwinter. <laughs> Looks like Leldon's in for more disappointment. That was fun. That's the spirit. A little battle was all we need to get the blood pumping. Almost wish they lasted a little longer. <laughs> Agreed. If this is a slice of life within Neverwinter, we were better off outside than inside. What, now that we're on my home ground now? Maybe you can sit back and be quiet while I show our leader around now, <laughs> all right? I am angry because those men wanted us dead, Nishka. Not out of some competition. We're lucky there weren't more this time. Yeah, but we're still standing and they're not. Great, isn't it? I wonder how much the bounty is for me now. I would like to know as well. It seems to happen a great deal. 
and I find it hard to believe it's all an accident. <laughs> Leldon still can't admit that he's the second best thief in Neverwinter. He's taken things a little too personally, if you ask me. Well, Leldon and I pulled a job about a year ago. Big haul, too. You should have been there. I was brilliant. So we get back to our hideout and start to divide up the loot, and that's when old Leldon demands a bigger share. I'm the one who got us past the guards and past the trap at the vault. Leldon was just baggage. He claims he planned it all. Not much of a plan if you don't know the guard patrol routes or that the vault is trapped. If it weren't for me, he would have never have gotten past the front door. So anyway, there's Leldon demanding a bigger share, and he's definitely planned this part out. He's hired Benin and his boys as muscle to make sure I agree. Well, the odds weren't in my favor. I'm delicate, you know. So Leldon and I argued for a bit, but I wasn't gonna win that one, so I got my tail out of there before Benin got antsy. What's worse is they didn't just take my share. They took everything I had. And I wasn't in much of a position to argue, you know? Oh, well, I couldn't just let things stand as they were. I mean, I am the best. Eldon's good, and he gets lucky sometimes, but he can't hold a torch to me. So I broke back into his place, stole all the loot, every last copper, and left a note explaining to him how I got past each one of his traps. I didn't get everything they stole back, especially some of the more precious things. But Leldon probably sold them by now anyway. <laughs> Too bad. And still, I got back way more than my share. Well, you know, a few coins here, a few coins there. It adds up. I have expenses. And stuff. Hey, thanks. You know, letting you team up with me was a really good decision. I mean, you actually helped me. And you insult me a lot less than the other people do. Before echoing our leader's pledge, next time it would help if we knew there were people hunting you to begin with. And why, since they seem to have their reasons. Oh, please, don't get all mad. Our leader isn't, and he's the one helping me. You're just tagging along, all right? Anyway, about this mess. I guess the Watch will clean these bodies up. Or maybe there will be a rain or something. <laughs> Let's go.
Well now, what can I do for you? Bit of venom for the belly, perhaps? Or maybe a tanker or two to shave the edge off your day. It is indeed. Finest establishment in the docks for a fine tanker of ale and some good conversation. Uncle Duncan. Oh, that sounds a bit familiar. If you're here to collect in some debt, I'll tell you that Duncan's a drunk fool without two coppers to his name. Digging, eh? So the time's come, has it? Trouble's chasing on your heels, and you barely know why. Suppose Digging told you less than half of what you need to know, then sent you packing. Don't take it hard. Done it to me twice in my life. All for good reason. I can probably guess why you're here, but why don't you go ahead and tell me anyway? Oh, did he? Nothing more than I did years ago. Plain silver near as we could tell. You and those shards were all that were left of that West Harbor battle. Duncan, I thought you said that shard was magic, didn't you? Trace of an enchantment on it is what that eel sand said, but nothing of importance. Probably residue from demon's fire or maybe wizard magic. Demon's fire? Sounds important to me. And that, Sal, is why you are cleaning tables and I own this place. Those shards were magic, yes, a trace. But again, it was sand, and he's a fool. Anyway, barely worth mentioning. More sentimental value than anything else. That really why you came all this way? To hear about your mother? Yeah, your mother, Esmeral. Since you were asking about the shards. What, Dagon still keeping that inside? It's a wonder he doesn't crack down the middle. Ah, but you know, I have no call to say that. I think that's why he buried that first shard and gave the other one to me. Here. I've always kept it close for some reason. Didn't want to leave it out of my sight. Seemed unremarkable. But I find that sometimes time will tell. Had Sand examined it a long time ago, but he turned up nothing. Well, it's worth a shot. But don't pay him any coin in advance, that's all I'll say. In fact, that viper would be best off- Ah, it seems I've arrived just in time to deflect the usual barrage of slander from the local innkeeper. Sand. Yes, it is good to see you're still sober enough to recognize me, Duncan. Pass the... Stale beer, vinegar, faint sweat, failed aspirations... Unwashed tunic... I thought perhaps you had already had one tankard too many for the day, but... Why, your guest here has the smell of a harbourman about them. Faint. But there... I thought Duncan was keeping company too good for him. Now I see I was right. Duncan, you could learn a few things from your guest. Hmm. Still passing off those two copper fairweather charms to the local sand? You have no appreciation for my talents and after all I've done for you. To think you could survive a fortnight without my ale purgative. Why, you would be buried in the tombs with the rest of the Neverwinter traitors. A betrayer of barkeepers everywhere. But enough about you and your adventurous exploits on the tavern floor. I heard my name mentioned, and oddly enough, almost in a tone that suggested I could help. This is Kin. I'm not really seeing the family resemblance. And we need your help concerning the shard. Both of them. Shard? That chunk of silver you showed me so long ago? Hmm, I do hope you're not going to try to pawn it to me again. I am no longer interested. Besides, as I recall, you said the piece of junk had sentimental value, which, upon viewing your establishment, is perfectly understandable. Besides, didn't your uncle or cousin or brother or whatever make off with the other shard? I thought you only had one now. It found its way back, so to speak. We need you to look at both of them again. Properly this time. Oh, very well. Give them here and let me see what my keen arcane senses can determine. Well, it seems to have some resentment to being scried. That is quite different than last time. Are you sure these are the same shards? The power in them? Why, it's definitely stronger than last time. Much stronger. Oh, so now they're magical. 
I'm not paying you for two failed divinations, you charlatan. It's not a matter of divination, you one tankard drunk. There is something about these shards. Without knowing their history, even my considerable talents cannot unlock their mysteries. Because he's incompetent? Duncan, the more I speak to your kin here, it's evident where the sense in the family went. Since you seem to have been given all the brains of the family, I'll be honest with you, I don't know. But I do know the shards did not have the same strength the first time I examined them. There could be something about you that causes them to resonate. But I have no idea why that would be. Taking them to any other wizard in town would be useless until we learn more about their past. You need a sage, and you need them examined quickly, so... You could try and speak to Aldenon, but I don't think you'd have much luck reaching him. The Black Lake District is closed down. Aldenon lives in the Black Lake District, you see, and now he's trapped there. The watch has it locked tight, no one going in or out, no messages in or out, even for the nobles that used to live there. Quite cryptic, really. I heard about that. Lord Dalrin was killed, wasn't he? I've heard rumors, but no official word of what happened. As have I. Not only are the Watch not talking about it, but they even called in the Cloak Tower mages to investigate, which means sorcery or demons were at work. Demons? Closest I've ever come to demons is Dagon's tales about the battles down south near West Harbor, when there was that trouble with the King of Shadows. Some sorcerer, I believe, had a number of demons and shadows at his beck and call. Not many tales left about that period of Neverwinter history, oddly enough. But you say this Aldenon might know more, Sand? <sighs> well, if you're not a member of the Watch, or know a secret route into Black Lake, then you're out of luck. So it seems like you have no choice but to let me examine the shards at my leisure. I'll need to hold on to them, of course. Wait. Watch or secret route? Not bad ideas. Either way, the coin lands. Hell, oh, there's Marshal Cormac. He's currently at the city watch post, and I know he's in bad need of an extra sword arm down at the docks. Yes, I heard he got back to Neverwinter recently. Surprised he even made it with the troubles I've heard around Fort Locke. Trust me, you don't know the half of it. Cormac's a harborman, too. And folks of the harbor are as close to kin as you can get out of the mare. He might be able to take you into the watch. And from there, speaking to Aldenon shouldn't be too hard. If you want to find another route into the Black Lake District, that means dealing with other folks that try to control the docks. Moya and her gang. Oh, there's an idea, Duncan. They probably were behind the watch closing the Black Lake District in the first place. Well, she's got thugs all over the docks, but finding one who can get you to her? There's Caleb. He used to try to get me to pay him gold for protection before I told him about the wards I'd inscribed on the building that caged the Guardian Elementals. Long story, but quick resolution. Caleb, maybe. But I don't trust that harbor rat to give you a fair deal, and the price will be steep, in bodies or coin. He doesn't like being the only one with blood on his hands. <laughs> Doesn't sound like someone we should put our faith in. Obviously, you've never dealt with the Watch in Neverwinter, Kelgar. Dealing with Caleb is probably our best chance. Still, the chances are simply talking to Caleb will make you want to kill him, so it seems a clear win to me. If you do speak to him, though, be sure to do it downwind. That's pretty much how it stands. You can find Cormac in the Watch Post, near the Dolphin Bridge that leads to the Merchant Quarter. He needs help, so it shouldn't be much of a tough sell to join up. Caleb should be lounging around the corner east along the main road. Just follow the smell. If you want to join with him, he'll probably ask you to hurt or kill someone, so be warned. I'll mark both on your map. Help you get your bearings. Well, you can certainly find your way into trouble from here. Me, I will head back to my lonely merchant existence. Should you need my expertise, simply ask. But just in case, bring a great deal of gold as well.
Well, there you have it. Talk to Caleb or Cormac. Cormac is at the watch post near the Dolphin Bridge. Caleb should be lounging down the street east along the main road. The docks isn't exactly a bastion of piety and faith. All the more reason you'll find your work cut out for you. Cormac's always on the lookout for someone with a mind for the law. But while you're here, feel free to make yourself at home. Also, any friend of yours is a friend of mine. Your companions are welcome to stay here as well. Even if you're off on some other journey like the one that sent you here. They're all welcome to make themselves at home whenever they're not traveling with you. That way you'll know where to find them if you need their help later. <laughs> Sound good? Yep, a lot of stories hanging on these walls. Shed a lot of my own blood, and others in the past. Now it all goes into the flagon. Well, if you can call it that. Me and some old friends, now gone, made quite a company along the coast. There were five of us to start, but by the end there was just me. I could, but they wouldn't go anywhere. And there wouldn't be any tension in them, since you know I survived anyway. Now Dagan, he may have some tales for you. About your mother, too.
This is the place. The Sky Mirror is ahead, but there are challenges we must face. The path to the Sky Mirror is a difficult path for anyone not of the Circle to walk, and it is also sealed against any who might accidentally stray near its waters, both for their protection and those of the Circle. The Sky Mirror is a powerful scrying device, capable of speaking to others who have touched its waters. It takes magic of the land to open the tides of the Sky Mirror. We may need to rest so I can cast the magic required. The challenge changes with every turning of the season, and so do the wards. I won't know the challenges until we come upon them. You should know that these paths are meant to only be walked with one of the circle. Those that come here without such a guide? This place... It is still filled with those that have wandered into these sacred woods and could not escape. They live still, but only as reflections of themselves. Try to avoid them, but if we cannot, then be prepared to fight. And the Sky Mirror itself has given rise to guardians as well. Creatures of the water. The Sky Mirror is a powerful scrying device, capable of speaking to others who have touched its waters. It takes magic of the land to open the tides of the Sky Mirror. We may need to rest, so I can cast the magic required. The challenge changes with every turning of the season, and so do the wards. I won't know the challenges until we come upon them. Very well. Be on your guard. We are still a ways from our destination, and the path is a long one. How can I help? Everyone, follow me! Stay close, and step where I step. I am listening. Yes. Stay close and step where I step.
Yes. This is the Sky Mirror. Do not stray too close to its waters. They can be a shock to the uninitiated. Give me a moment to center myself, and then I can try to contact the druids of Neverwinter Wood. All it requires is placing this offering within the Sky Mirror's waters, and then we shall wait. Eleni? Child, is that you? Elder Naven? Can you hear me? Yes, child. Where are you? I am touching the waters of the Sky Mirror, but I had thought to contact the druids of Neverwinter Wood, not one of my own circle. I was traveling for the past season, not as long from the mirror as you, perhaps, and only recently have I returned from the Sword Coast. This is Elder Naven, one of my circle. He has been a part of it for almost as long as Vashni and the others, but I did not realize he had left the mayor. He cannot hear you, but I can communicate your questions to him if you wish. Elder Naven, why were you traveling? And where are the druids of Neverwinter Wood? My path has been a long one. What I have found and what I have not troubles me. Like you, I've had no success in contacting the druids of Neverwinter Wood. I suspect they are avoiding me or have cut themselves off from others. We encountered one in Neverwinter and he had come in search of one of the Circle of the Mare, either you or I, but had found no one, not even Elder Vashni. That is troubling news, and part of what drove me here. I returned, because I felt something was wrong with the Mare, and I have not been able to reach any of the other Druids. This failing from the Mare, it is like a black silence stretching through Mare Delane, and even seeing through the eyes of animals and birds has proved useless. Elder Naven, we did find one of the Circle of the Mare, Khalil. He was maddened, and we were forced to fight him. What? How did this happen? Elder, I do not know. I fear it is tied to whatever is occurring in the Mare. And he said that our Circle, that it was lost. If so, we may be the only two left. We shall see with our own eyes first. This news of Khalil saddens me. Was there no other way? Elder... Khalil was driven mad. He had slaughtered the animals of Maiden's Glade, tore them apart while he was trapped in the form of a bear. Troubling. It must not have been an easy thing to do. Such an act of mercy, Eleni. Elder Naven, we came here to ask the lore keepers of Neverwinter Wood if they knew anything of what was happening at the mare. And we fear that whatever is occurring in the mare is tied to a set of silver fragments we carry. Silver fragments? Like the one carried by that village boy you were watching? Uh, yes, but he did not carry it. It was hidden near the village, I believe. He retrieved it from the Ilfarn ruins there. Hmm, that is a strange coincidence. But perhaps not. The darkness clouding the mare. It is familiar in some respects to events that occurred at the time of the discovery of those shards. During the war against the King of Shadows long ago, a similar darkness infested the mare though not as thick as it is now. Can he have returned? There were many battles fought in the mare, and at its borders. One even at West Harbor. Eleni, I must continue onto the mare and try to find what became of Vashni and the others. Even if they are dead, I must see it with my own eyes and see what I can do to find out more about this threat and the shards you speak of. Of course, Elder Naven. Good fortune, Eleni. I know of your vigil, but now we must focus our sight back to where it belongs on the lands we tend. I... I know, Elder Naven. Forgive me. I will contact you when I know more. I will send a messenger. You will know it when it arrives. Until we meet again, Eleni. 
Beware the shadows. There is nothing more we can do here, I'm afraid. Something is wrong. The spirits are gathering. We must leave at once. We are not welcome here. for you. You have felt us in the land. Now, feel the touch of darkness upon you. Summon the protectors of the Sky Mirror here, this priest. But the way is hidden. How did he manage to find his way here? We must leave. If we remain, others may come. Yes. So...
I am listening. So, yes, perhaps so.
Gory Conforus. Ladies, ladies, please, there's no call to lose our tempers over this. Temper? I haven't even gotten warmed up yet. <laughs> Being able to keep a rein on your spells is a sign of discipline, Quara. Something you could never master. <laughs> and the instructors aren't here to shield you. Go on, set fire to this whole street and this sad tavern, and you'll never be able to return to the Academy, let alone Neverwinter. As if I'd want to stay in that prison with you high-nosed witches for another year. You're right. Here among the docks is where you belong, <laughs> peddling yourself for cheap coin. Wow! Someone give me a tankard! This is going to get good! What in the nine hells did I do to deserve the- Oh, thank the god you've arrived. Do something, these ladies are about to start throwing spells outside my establishment. Whatever you do, do it quick! I won't be able to ferry enough water from the harbor to put out a blaze if things get out of hand. Heatha, I think members of the Watch are here. Friends of yours, Clara? <laughs> Sent to bail you out, perhaps? I don't need anyone's help to turn you into ash. There is nothing to discuss. Quara has threatened us for the last time, and we will stand for it no longer. Yeah? If Quara's so superior to us, then I say let her prove it, without the Academy instructors stepping in to stop things. The instructors? They never stopped me before. You always went running to them, not me. I've heard every word you've said about me, always talking behind my back, ridiculing me, just because it takes you a shoreman's hour to cast a cantrip. <laughs> and you think setting fire to a stable while casting yours is any better, Quara? 
I practice restraint, not showy, excessive displays. Yeah, Hitha is simply cautious in her craft. You're the dangerous one, Quara. If you knew how dangerous I was, then you should have known better than to push me this far. I... I would not intervene if I were you, else we'll be forced to stop you as well. We are wizards, you know. Yes, wizards. From the Academy. But we don't want any trouble with you. Just Quara. Heatha, I don't want to be cast out of the Academy if we're arrested. Very well. <laughs> this isn't worth it. You're fortunate this time, Quara. Next time, you'd better not let us catch you outside the Academy walls. Ugh. Come, Glenna. I think we've smelled enough of the docks for one day. I didn't need your help. Those wizards had it coming. Those noble-born wannabe mages are just jealous. They don't like the fact that I can summon more power from my thumb than they can with a day's worth of concentration. They're always staring into their tomes and books trying to categorize magic. It's a waste of time. It just is. And either you understand it or you don't. It's instinct. Well, the thing is, I'm not a part of the Academy anymore. I quit, sort of, after burning down the stable. Last you should have thought of that before starting a fight outside the flagon and the damage you caused before they even showed up. It's the wood you use in the rafters. It sets fire easily. Sorry about that. Sorry? Oh, lass, I wasn't asking for an apology. You'll be paying me back, you will, for all my lost business, for a tarnished reputation, and for putting me and my kin in danger like that. What? I'm not working for either of you, ever. No, lass, you will. Or by gods, you'll bring down a fury from me like you've never seen. And not only that, if you don't, you'll be proving those other girls right. I don't think you're willing to admit you don't have discipline, restraint, or a sense of responsibility like they claim to have. Besides, I doubt you'll be welcome back at the Academy. No, she's not going anywhere. If you won't take her with you, then she's going to be working off her debt right here until it's settled. Grab a rag, sorceress. There's tables inside that need cleaning for those pretty hands of yours. You'll regret this when your inn is in flames in a day's time.
poros. Walks away. My steel was
Lei mi vuol grini. away from this. You call that an insult, goat girl? 
Even the tree worshiper could scrape up something better than that. Goat girl? I've never heard that one before, Stumpy. Ah, you're not trying. That's a nickname, not an insult. We are in Fisk call our own children, Stumpy, you skinny bull. Ah. Skinny bull? That doesn't even make any sense. Go back to your drinking, Moss Breath. At least you're good at that. Amateurs. Amateurs? Hey, the Tavern Queen thinks she's better than us, Kelgar. Is that so? You're the one wiping the tables, your highness. You two wouldn't know an insult if it walked up and bit you. Well then, why don't you show us how it's done, fire hair? Fire hair. Imaginative and biting, with just the slightest hint of wit. Is that really the best your demon blood can squeeze out? Tail for brains? My brains are not in my tail. So, what are they, right next to it? If so, might want to loosen the back of your pants a notch. Because even with the hole, they're obviously not getting enough air. Okay, explain that one to me. Well, she said your brains are next to your tail. Which would imply that your brains are in your rear end. And that you breathe through your, uh... <laughs> okay, okay, I get it, all right, little witch. Don't take it so hard, I had to explain it, which means the insult's a failure. Put a tankard for effort, your highness. Uh, by my reckoning, the Flagans never had a finer table-cleaning goblin wench. What, since your mother lost her job? <laughs> now don't you be bringing my mother into this. You'd best be careful, you simpering little father's girl, or you'll learn a thing or two about Iron Fist honor and manhood. Oh, you mean the two smallest things in all of Faerun? From what I hear, no woman could learn about Iron Fist manhood from you, Kelgar. W what? I, I'll have you know plenty of women know about Iron Fist manhood. Plenty. They just all live up around Waterdeep. Or they tell you. Kelgar, calm down. Calm down? I won't take those words from some twig of a girl who doesn't know enough to choose the right tavern to fight in. At least I learned my lesson from my tavern brawl, you fat-bellied little knee-high. Now, if you're done matching wits with me and coming up short, why don't you trundle back to your high chair and drink up your honor until it comes out the other end? Maybe later on, I'll come by to put you in your cradle. Oh! <laughs> wow, fat-bellied little knee-high. That's good. Shut up, tail for brains. Ha! And here I thought mages had nothing to offer the world. Tonkin, another round. Uh, enough, enough, enough. Get back to work, Quara. And you can fetch your own drink, dwarf. Seeing as how you still haven't paid for a single drop since you've been here. Ha! There's a gold coin. That should pay for her for the rest of the day. And thank you. I was wondering when you'd give me free reign of the kegs. Some dwarves should never be allowed to walk the surface, little freeloaders. I didn't ask for your company. Great. What's wrong now? Why not? They're always talking about me behind my back at the academy, and I decided I wasn't going to take any more. I know more than they ever will about magic. They're simpering little girls who can't even levitate a fork if they wanted to. Oh, that I'm dangerous, that I act all superior, that I talk down to them. So what if I do? All they get from magic is what they read out of a book. You tell me, is it better to experience something or read about it? If I have to explain that to you, then you're a lost cause. I mean, I know what power feels like rushing through me. They've barely sipped from the stream. It's like this shiver that starts spreading through you. A warmth, like it's coming from your heart and your head all at once. And you feel that warmth get hot. So much so you think you can burn anything in your path, yet you'll only be brushed by it. I, I can't even explain it, but trust me, I know. You sound like one of the masters at the academy, and I got sick of them really fast too. Go on and ask. Why? Like you care? If I didn't almost burn down your uncle's dumb establishment, I wouldn't even be here. Hey! Oh, stow it, you drunk.
why? You going to lecture me like the academy instructors used to? Forget it. I'll say what I want, when I want. If you don't like it, shove off. Well, it's not hard to guess which side of the classroom you heard that from. Those instructors. They don't know what they're talking about. And if I had to page through one more dusty tome, forget it. Finally, someone who can speak some sense. I wish you could tell the masters and the students at school that. They keep them all sheltered there like sheep. How are they ever going to learn anything from a book or potion bottle? Go on and ask. Why? Like you care? If I didn't almost burn down your uncle's dumb establishment, I wouldn't even be here. Hey! Oh, stow it, you drunk! My problem is, people keep telling me what to do, and I don't need to hear it anymore. I can handle myself. I know my powers, and I don't need somebody telling me how to use them. <laughs>